Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. Today, I want to talk about components. We're not going to do any modeling today, but instead, we're going to take a step back and take a look at some previous projects. Let's take a look at the browser here. So if we look at this main component, we can think of it as a master assembly. So inside the component, we have no bodies. All we have is just a, few, a couple of components. So we have parts and then we have enclosures. Right click, isolate. And what you notice is inside the parts, it's not actual 3D printed parts, it's just the components that are inside my 3D printed enclosure. So in this simple foot switch project, I have uh, the electronics, some, com uh, some of the connectors, and even some hardware stuff. Um, so that's one component and then a, quite a few other components inside of it. If we take a look at, let's right click, unisolate, and then we'll do another right click, isolate. So inside the enclosure, you'll see that these are all the parts that make up the 3D printed enclosure. If we open the enclosure, there's still no bodies, it's just more components. We have the base, the bracket, and the top part. And if we break these down, you can see that these actually have the bodies. And there's just one body per component. You can even see that the, um, even without opening, you'll see that the uh, component that has components in it has like these two little bodies inside of it. And uh, a component that has just one body has this little icon. So that's just a visual cue to let you know uh, without having to drill it in if you have multiple bodies or not. Now, it's really, to me, it's really important to structure my projects like this from the beginning before I start designing. Let's take a look at a project and show you sort of how I typically would uh, create a project. So I'm going to go all the way to the back and I'll show you what's the first thing you should do is to make a component, right? But in this case, I had this impulse behavior of just getting in and designing right away. So I made the mistake of just sketching things out and making, uh, making my design. Now, this works well if you're going to make a component that's going to be imported to a bigger assembly. But in this case, I sort of didn't do that. And it's not that big of an issue if we go all the way back to, if we go all the way to the end of the timeline, you can see that I do have some components. I even have some nested components, like the electronics are inside of electronics component. Um, and uh, there, there's a hardware as well that has a bunch of screws. So it's almost there, it, it, it works pretty well, but take a look at the timeline. So if we look at the timeline, I have a lot of repeating things. And a lot of this is just turning a body into a component. So the idea here is that you just get started, start making your, your parts, and then clean them up after you're done. And that's not really a, a problem, but to me, it's, it's sort of this unnecessary uh, clutter. So I have all these things here that I don't, I didn't, whoa, I don't know what's going on there. I just had a really weird, <laughs> now you can see why this is a problem. I have no idea why these errors came out about. That is the weirdest thing. Uh, I haven't done anything here. <laughs> I really don't know what, what what's going on here. 53 features. What is this? I have no idea what that is. Um, I haven't really done anything except move my marker around. So maybe it is a bad thing to come in here and do this. Uh, okay, now everything's gone. I didn't change anything. Anyway, it's, whew, that's a good thing I'm recording this so you can see what happened there. I have no idea. But the thing is when I come back in here um, and I try to make sense of this design, it's a little bit difficult because, uh, well, I, I don't, I didn't think about my structure or really trying to minimize the amount of features in my timeline, which is actually kind of a good goal to have. Um, another thing that you'll notice is that I have all these colors here. So you'll see my timeline has these neat colors and that's a good visual helper to let you know, uh, to give you kind of segments, uh, separation uh, between uh, features and components. And by default, unfortunately, this isn't turned on, I believe. So you can turn that on by hitting the cog wheel on the lower uh, right here and clicking on component color swatch. 
So if I turn that off, you look how just all these colors are gone and I really can't separate them. Uh, same thing over here, all the colors are gone as well. So let's go ahead and turn that back on and leave it on and you'll see that all the colors in the browser uh, relate with the colors here in the timeline feature. That's actually a really good feature that I didn't think people knew about, uh, but it's good to, to kind of call out. So this design is a good example of sort of what, not, not, not what to do, but just an option out here, just an observation of, uh, of this project structure. Uh, so the next project I wanna show you is a bit more cleaner. This one is uh, pretty similar. I have parts here. And inside the parts, I have a bunch of linked components. So we got slide switches, screens, and sensors, and they all live inside the parts. So if we go all the way back in the timeline, you can see the first things I did was just make components. That's the first steps I did. I knew I was going to bring in electronics, so I want them all to be grouped into a component called parts. You can call it whatever you'd like, but I'm calling it parts. Very generic. And then the second component I created is called enclosure. And inside enclosure, uh, you know, I might not necessarily know I'm going to have a top, a bottom, a bracket, a case, a top, you know, I've already said top. But this is really um, what I need to get the habit into is just creating these components um, before actually uh, drawing anything. So I know I'm, I don't necessarily know how many parts are going to be in the enclosure, but I do know I'm going to have more than one, so I might as well make uh, a separate component for each part that will con that will be contained inside the enclosure component. So let's step all the way out and then see how everything is in here. So you can see I have a case, and inside the case I have the screen, a frame, I have a lens part, and inside the lens I have a hood, a cover, and a gear. Now, if we step all the way back here, you actually see that I didn't necessarily um, build the, uh, the, the lens uh, components correctly because you can tell because I have all of these, um, these features in the timeline that say body to component. Those are turning bodies into components. So originally, I just had all these free-floating bodies. And I'll tell you the main reason why I'm even doing this is because when you try is because of this. Take a look at the the uh, the joy. Let's go to our animation timeline. You'll see that our animation workspace. You'll see that I have a bunch of things, um, a bunch of animations. And the only way to do animations is to have components. You can't do them with just bodies. So this is kind of what kickstarted my um, my whole habit of trying to get a better structure of my of my parts. Um, so that's what I've been starting to do. Uh, so the, uh, the, this project is almost there. It's not 100% because I do have a handful of these body to components. So the goal is not to have any of these. After that, I created this project, which is, uh, has a lot more parts to it. And you'll see that I actually have three main components. So I have the parts, which is all the electronics and then the enclosure, which consists of the case, a holder, a bottom cover, and even a knob. The next thing is called hardware. So this is where I'm starting to add hardware to my projects, uh, mainly screws, washers, hex nuts, that sort of stuff all lives in the hardware component. Uh, and again, um, I wanted to uh, minimize the amount of um, of these guys here, but I kind of can't avoid these uh, because um, I'm using this guy over here, which is called the insert McMaster car component. And this is where I get all my hardware screws, right? Uh, so I bring in the screws. But again, a lot of the times I'll bring in my screws and forget to make the component, the hardware component, where all those screws are going to live. Because definitely chances are I'm going to have a lot more than one or two screws. I'm going to have quite a few of them. Uh, so this one, I definitely wanted to create that hardware component before adding all of my screws. And that just helps me, um, again, with the animation CAD stuff, if I go into animation, you can see, um, well, it's a little broken here, but uh, you can see that I can uh, break apart the the, uh, the screws into its own thing, uh, or at least maybe I did, <laughs> maybe I didn't, but that's that's 
possible now that I have this so I can kind of move this whole group or hide this whole group of, uh, of hardware. So that's really cool. This next project I want to talk about is where uh, things kind of got a little bit um, messy and cluttered. So what I ended up doing was I actually created two, uh, ver two different versions of a part, um, but uh, I kind of did it in this way where it didn't make sense. So if we go to the timeline, you can see that I have a bunch of these pieces here, the purple uh, components. They all pertain to this base piece. Uh, and then if we go all the way down, you'll see that there's more purple stuff. <laughs> this is my attempts of making a redesigned base piece because I needed to completely reorient where the motor is positioned. So they're completely different uh, features that make up the base. Uh, so I wasn't quite sure how to approach it, and this is now, looking back on it, it's definitely the wrong approach. Uh, so what I would have done instead is I should have come uh, back here to the last part. Uh, you see how I create these new components? From here, I should have went to the last feature, right-click, roll history marker here. And then I should have started from this area to create the uh, the redesign of it because then I could have just selected these guys, shift select, and then just deleted that whole chunk uh, uh, to minimize that because I don't need to have this version that never really made it uh, to production in my, my world production. Uh, so this is a good example of uh, when things get a little bit hairy. Uh, I even tried to kind of move these guys over here all the way back to uh, to this area, and I was unable to do so because some of the sketches, uh, you know, the, some of the sketches uh, were dependent on other things, uh, so it just wouldn't allow me to move things. Uh, so what I ended up doing was creating a whole new document, uh, and then designing from not from scratch, but with a better uh, idea in mind, a better structure in mind. So that's what I did in this project. Uh, so if we scroll through it, you'll see that um, there's just big chunks of components um, and there's none of these like inner, well, there's a little bit here, uh, but for the most part, it's easy. It's these big chunks of features that are segmented that uh, really uh, reflect the browser here. So that's a kind of a nice, uh, a nice uh, goal to have when, when trying to structure your project. Um, so I was able to do this quickly uh, because I had already figured out all the dimensions, all the tolerances, all the positions of the components. Um, they're all figured out in this, in this design. I just needed to start over again with the right um, with the right structure in mind. So I came up with this uh, a lot more digestible and just more organized um, uh, design. And you'll notice that I don't have any copy body or turn or convert a body to a component. There are none of those in this design. Uh, and it's really, really easy to come in here and kind of comprehend it and digest uh, all the things in here. So this is sort of my like go-to um, standard project. I don't have the hardware yet, um, but that is something that I totally could add because um, I do need some screws over here and maybe over here as well. Um, and I probably should have added uh, the ball bearing to the hardware uh, component that I haven't created yet. Um, so I can still add that in here if I want to come back and uh, maybe do some CAD explosions. Uh, so that's the dice roller project. The foot switch project uh, is pretty similar. Uh, I, I don't have hardware in this one either, but I do have that sort of same concept of create your master parts component and then put all of your all of your electronics and connectors inside there. And then the electronics, or I mean the sorry, the enclosure has um, the, uh, the, uh, the the individual uh, pieces that are singular components that have singular um, bodies in them. And this is a pretty simple project, so I could really focus my attention on um, being aware of the components and the structure. So that's pretty much all I really wanted to cover in this tutorial. Um, 
there's uh, a lot of ways to do different things in Fusion, but as uh, I kind of have the luxury of creating a new project every single week. So I'm every time I come in here and I need to make this big change, if I can't do it fast enough, um, sometimes I you know it makes sense to redo it um, because it's just such a mess. So it's it's easy to make a mess. And it's okay if you do make a mess. As you saw, I wanted to show you my messiest work. I have some even messier work. Um, but as uh, I keep getting uh, uh, more and more experience, um, my goals change and um, I start thinking before. Remember, I have that impulse of just jumping in and designing. And that's, that's really good to have, but it, that little extra 30 seconds of making components and thinking about your structure, I think can help and be very, very useful in the long run. So let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions or future suggestions uh, for tutorials, please let me know. I'd love to hear them. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.